Good morning. How many have studied your lesson today? Ooh, look at the hands. There's some that didn't go up, though. <laughs> but we do have a great lesson today. It's good to be in God's house. I'm glad to see you here. I just wish every chair was full. And maybe one day it will be. And I will say it will be one day. If we do our part. God always does his part. Isn't that a wonderful way to look at the things that God has done for us already in the past? And he's going to do greater works than these. He tells us, I'll do greater works than what you see. I'll do things you never expected. God's going to do that here, folks. Have patience. Pray. And listen to what's said today about this lesson. It's very, very important. But before we get into the lesson, there's a couple things I want you to think about this week. I want you to think about milk and meat. Spiritually. Spiritual milk. Spiritual meat. What does it mean? Does it does it have a meaning to it, each one of those? I would say yes, it does. I don't know what that is. But, but anyhow, and another thing, there's two things I want you to think about this week and pray about and read what the Bible says about it. That's the milk and the meat. And the next is angels and spirits. They're different. Read about these. I'll tell you one thing about the evil spirits. Do you remember in the Bible, in Luke chapter 8, 26 through 33, where Christ met this man in the tombs? And he had demons, which is evil spirits. And he, he said his name was Legion because he had many. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many a legion is? Have you ever looked up that word? In the Roman army, a legion was between 3,000 and 6,000. Can you imagine having thousands of demons in you? What a pitiful condition. But this man had it. But God took care of that. The Lord Jesus took care of this. Can people have demons today? Yes. Yes, the world is filled with demons. Every person has a hundred demons around him. Personal friends to him. But you know, we also got the angels around us too. As personal friends that watches over God's children. Now these are some of the things I want you to think about and read about and study this week. It'll open your mind. It'll put you on another level when you realize what's happening in the world today. These are not just happening to the world. They're happening to God's people. To us, they're there. And when you realize it, it's going to scare you. It'll scare you right into the arms of God, where we all need to be at all times. So let's do this. Lord, we come to you this morning thanking you for this beautiful day, first of all, that you've given us. This is your day. This is a day that we gather together to worship you, dear God, in spirit and in truth. You are our God. You are our Lord. You are our Savior. Help us, dear Lord, to understand your word, that we get out of the milk and into the meat. That's what we got in our lesson today, Lord. This is meat. John's giving us meat today. Help us to be able to digest it. To apply it to our lives. We ask this in the name of our Lord. Amen. 
Amen. My relationship with God is reflected in how I live. It's what our lesson is pointed to today. Sure of a relationship is the title of it. Are you sure that you have a relationship with Christ, with God? You know, all saved people don't. And it's a shame because all saved people can have and should have. So let's read about this and see what John is telling us today. He wrote this letter. This is 1 John that we're studying. This whole series of lessons is coming from 1 John. We're going to travel. We're going to walk with John as he explains <coughs> God's word to us a little better. That we could live a little closer to God. And we can. We can always. We never get too close. But we can get closer than we are now as an individual and as a church. And that's what we want. That's what God wants. So what God wants is what we should want also. That should be our desire. God's desire is, should be ours. Then we can walk with him. We can talk with him more. We have a relationship, a greater relationship with God when we do these things. When, he th when these things are available to us. So let's see what we can do to increase our relationship with God. To be stronger. To be able to digest the meat that John has given us today. How do we do it? Well, we do it by doing, being obedient to God's word. First John chapter 2, verse 3 says, And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. You know, so many people that claims to be Christians, and I don't doubt that they are, that they're saved, doesn't know. See, that's a piece of meat. They can't digest this. They have been taught different by spiritual leaders that you can't really know. The Bible tells me, John right here, the Apostle John, that was so close to God, known as God, after God's own heart. He says you can know, whereby we do know that we know him. That means we do know that we're saved. We do know that we're going to heaven. We do know we're his child. Now, how can they dispute that? They choose not to. Because they can't digest it. They have been taught different. And when you're taught something when you're little, it's hard to get away from it when you're big. That's why the Jews had such a hard time with Jesus Christ. They had been taught different by their leaders. And yet it was recorded in God's word. They didn't believe it. And there's a lot of saved people today that don't believe some of the things that are written in the Word of God. Don't teach it. They're false teachers in that respect. They might be true teachers in some respect, but there are some things that they teach wrong. Why? Because they own the milk at that particular subject. They haven't grown. They haven't really tested God. They really don't believe some of the Bible. If it's not here, I don't believe it, no matter what someone says. And you shouldn't either. Don't believe what I say. Believe what this says, and you will be all right. <coughs> Go by this. Not no teacher, not no preacher. Not your best friend, not your grandma, but this. This is the most important thing that a Christian has is right here. And it's available to everyone. 
And if you don't have one, I'll buy you one. In fact, we've got some right here that's free to anybody who wants one. And if you know someone that don't have one, get one and give it to them. They need to have it. And they need to read it. And they need to pray. And then they will understand what we're talking about. But, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. You see, he added something to that. We not only can know him, know that we know him, how can we do that? By keeping his commandments. Are we doing that? I'm not asking you, ask yourself, am I keeping his commandments? Am I doing what John says to do? He that says, I know him and keep not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. It's meat. Can you digest it? Is this the meat of the word? John don't cut no slack here. And he shouldn't, and we shouldn't either. We should believe everything that's written and recorded right here in this word. Not what somebody says. And I'm going to read this again. He that says, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. This is the proof, he's saying. This is the proof that you know that you're saved if you keep his commandments. And if you have his love, keeps his word. If you keep his word, the love of God, it will be in you. And you will know these things that we should know. He that saith I, he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Talking about Christ. We should walk like Christ. As his children, we should walk like him. Why? Because we're his children. And he tells us to. And that should be sufficient right there. But is it? John is saying the same thing that Christ said. Now, you don't have to believe John, but you better believe Christ. <laughs> if, you're his say, if you're saved, you better believe him. You better believe what he says. Because he's repeating what Christ taught. You know... <laughs> Sometimes we may believe it. Deep down in our heart, we may believe, hey, this is true. But we don't live it. We have to live it. Not only believe it, but to live the Bible. Live the way that God wants us to live. Then we can walk with him. That's what he's saying. He that says he abided in him ought also to walk with him. Are you walking with Christ? Am I walking with Christ? If we're not following him, we're not walking with him. If we're not doing his bidding, we're not really walking with him. We believe it, but we're not living it. That's two different things. And I jotted down a few things here about walking that we're, we're, I'm going to go over real quick. As, and I'll repeat, 1 John 2, verse 6, He that says that he abides with Christ ought also to walk with him. One reason, the first step in walking with with. Him is one has to be saved. If you're not a Christian, you cannot walk with God. 
no matter how much you try, no matter how good you are, how moral you are, you cannot walk with God because you are not his child. Is that hard to believe? It's not to us, but it is to some people. Some people don't believe that. They believe they can walk with God and that they'll go to heaven. But that's as far as it goes right there. Good works, maybe. I don't know. But you have to be saved. You have to be born again. You've got to be a believer in Christ if you want to walk with him. Second, we totally belong to him. Bought with a price. And the price is that he died for us, a willing sacrifice for our sins. That means you've got to be saved. Three, we must have communion with him and fully be obedient to God, the Father, just as he was to his Father. Are we obedient to him? Are we having communion with him? Do we communicate with God on a daily basis? Maybe an hourly basis? We have to communicate with God. We have to talk with him. For be committed to him. Work diligently for lost souls. Christ was not idle. Neither should we be. Christ knew that he had only a, an allotted time, and so do we. Do you ever feel because time is getting short in your life, and it's shorter than it was yesterday, a day? It's shorter by a week than it was last week, and a year from last year. So we have only an allotted time, folks. Do you feel any pressure that you need to really get busy? I do. I feel it's important to work harder now than I did last year. We need to feel that. If we want to walk with God, we have to. We have to realize some of these things in our life and do it. We've got to have self-denial. Don't forget the fact that we are his servants. So sometimes we've got to deny ourselves. And we've got to get into that by the lust of the flesh. We've got to deny the lust of the flesh. If we're going to walk with him. And, you know, you cannot read anywhere in the books of John, the writings of John, without reading the word love. It's just filled with the word love. And he's talking about the real love, agape love. That's as high love as you can get. You're on the pinnacle of that love. Love, as John could not write without using the word love, neither can we live and walk without love in our own hearts for all. Not for your best friend. Not from your mom or daddy. Not from those, your brothers and sisters. It's got to be all people. Even the ones you don't like. That's not liking them. That's loving them. That's not enduring them. That's loving them. More than you love yourself. Is that meat? Is it hard to swallow? I'm about to swallow the whole cow at once. I know. <laughs> that is the meat. Yes. It hits us all, don't it? It hits us all. None of us is immune to that. But if we're going to walk with God, we've got to put this in our vocabulary and in our life. It should be more than just a word to us, but a way of life. All of these things should. Devotion. We cannot walk with him without being devoted. It's impossible. How impossible. Devoted always to the cause of Christ. 
How devoted we are. Prayer? You think that's important? Yeah. This says it all. We have to talk with them daily. Communicate as he communicated and talked with his father. These are some things that's important to us. They help us to be able to digest the meat. Get off of the milk. We don't want to stay there. That's good for a baby. It's good for a newborn Christian. But you got to get off of it sometime. You got to grow up spiritually, just as a child grows up. We got to mature, folks, to the point that we're walking with. Christ and we love the trip. We love to walk with him. And we want others to do the same. Then the last one is to obey and serve. That's what God wants from all of us. As a must if we're going to walk with him. Amen. As Jesus' life was a life of service to God, it is a sure thing that we cannot walk with him without following in Christ's footsteps. So that's what John's talking about here. When he says, He that says he abides in him ought himself also to walk with him. That's walking with Christ. Doing these things that the Word of God tells us to do. You'll get off that milk real quick. I will too. If we get on this meat. We'll grow faster. We'll grow stronger. We'll go on a different level. That's what we want. If we're going to be soul winners, if we're going to get out there and do what God wants, we, we've got to grow up. We've got to do these things that God tells us to do. Not just know them. And then, this is one of the best writers that, that's written our, our Sunday school book, literature. This guy here. He's good. I think his name was Blake Gideon. And he is writing some good lessons. So, it says, True love for God is reflected through gracious obedience to his command. True love for God. Now, you cannot be a true, faithful follower of of God unless you do have the love in your heart the desire in your heart the want to in your heart to do these things you got to want to do something before you do it and do it right how much do we want God in our life how much do we want to serve God that depends on us we know God wants us to serve we know he wants us to work for him. He knows these things, folks, that we ought to do. And we know most of them, but it's just doing it. Really obeying God. It says, true love for God is reflected through this gracious obedience to his commands. Throughout John's writings, he reminds us of the call to love others. The love of God is perfected, which means it is maturing us, pointing us to our conversion and transformation. We're being transformed when we do these things, from a baby to a grown-up. When we accepted him, we were transformed from a sinner to a saved person, his child. But that's not all the transformation we need. We need to be transformed daily to a higher level. And we do that by being obedient and serving God and doing what he wants. You want to grow? This is the way we grow. But being obedient in service to God. Doing the things. Love that person that's unlovable. Love him anyhow. It don't matter. Christ died for all. You need to love all. He did. 
He's our prime example. John is my mentor. Christ is my savior. John told us what to do and how to do it and why we should do it. He teaches us, along with the Holy Spirit, which indwells us. We have it all available to us, folks. There's nothing missing on God's part. If there's something missing, it's on our part. Let's all mature. Let's get on a higher level. We can. God will do it. But it's up to us. A little thought. Why don't you love them? I do. This is Christ. I died for them as well as I died for you. <clears throat> if you don't love them, you don't love me. For I'm loved, can't you see? That's Christ. That's him telling us what to do. Does it click? Will it make a difference in us? I hope it does. And then we go to verse 7, 1 John, chapter 2. Our time is getting away from us. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, this is John talking, but an old commandment which he had from the beginning. You know, God has never left people without a commandment. Did you ever notice that? But the commandments have changed down through the centuries. What was good for the law is not our commandment today. It was good for the time because God gave it to a certain people in a certain dispensation, a certain era. Amen. But the era now is different. This is a different era. The old commandment is the word which he had heard from the beginning. Well, what's new about it? Nothing new about it. It was there. It was what it was. And it served its purpose. But when Christ came, that ended. That ended that. Is that meat to you? That's what the Bible says. That ended the blood sacrifices that they done. Because he is a sacrifice, the son of God. The perfect sacrifice. They'll never need another sacrifice. You see, that's gone. Christ fulfilled that need himself. Can you see that? He took the place of these animals. He was a willing, a perfect sacrifice for, the, for God the Father. And he said, I'll do it, Father. I'll go, Father. I'll suffer it, Father, for these people. I'll do it for them and for you. Are we willing to stand for Christ, for God, after all that he has done for us? Of all the teachings that he teaches us to do, will we do it? Will we say, God, yes, I will do it. I will gladly do it. I will gladly witness. I will gladly sing. I will gladly do whatever it is you want me to do. Here am I, send me. Is that the way you feel? That's the way we should all feel. Yes, Lord, send me. I'll do it. I'll gladly do it. Oh, I don't want to do that, Lord. Don't make me do that. That's a preacher's job anyhow. That's what we're paying him for. False. That is not true. That's our job. If you're a Christian, that's your job. If you're saved by the 
blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That's your job and my job. You can't pawn it all. It's not acceptable to God. It's only acceptable to us. These, these are excuses we come up with to keep ourselves from serving God as we should. It's my excuse sometimes. I don't know about you, you might have another one. But we all have excuses for doing what we do. But you know what an excuse is? It's the skin of a reason filled with a lie. That's what it is. That's the best definition I can give. Are we serving God as we should? Are we doing what God wants us to do? If we're not, we're not walking with him. The only way you're going to walk with God is to follow him. And then verse 8 is not a contradiction now. It says again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. Talking about Jesus Christ. You see, he wasn't here on this earth. In the days when they sacrificed. He wasn't here. But when he came and was sacrificed, it's no more of these sacrifices being offered. No more goats killed, no more cows, no more doves. That was in the past. Christ came and gave himself as a sacrifice. There'll never be another one that makes any sense. So this is a new one. He came and fulfilled the law to a jot and tittle completely. Is that hard to digest? Not really. Not if you haven't been taught that from that big, from a baby. Now if you were taught that different from a little baby on up, it might be, it might be hard to digest. It might be hard to believe, to accept. But none of us have been through that. We have all been born in a reasonable time that we know Jesus Christ or have heard of him. We might know it, not know him personally, but we have all heard of him. The world has. But the world is not saved. It's just those who accept the, the sacrifice of Christ. Accepts him. So Christ fulfilled the old. And by his sacrifice he established a new covenant and that's what he's saying a new commandment which is a new covenant to us this covenant is his new commandment and that's the commandment of the church age we're in the church age which is the last age that's going to be until christ comes back for the rapture don't look for another one it's not not going to happen So, this is a new commandment that shows us light, true light, now shine instead of darkness. You see, they just had the prophecy of Jesus coming, a Savior coming. They believed the Savior, Savior was coming before he came because it was written. He's going to send you a Savior. And they were looking for him, but they wasn't looking for a little baby born in a stable. They wasn't looking for a man that was born of woman. So they missed it. And they seen him and they killed him. But he came here for that purpose. It's hard for us to believe that one man, one God, he was God and man at the same time, and people can't get wrapped around that either. But he was. And he came for a purpose. And that was to be a sacrifice for me. And you. That's what he came for. And so. A true light now shines, and that's Jesus Christ. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother. Now this is some tough meat here. 
is in darkness even until now. Now, John wrote this letter to save people. John wrote this letter to save people. Do you believe there be, could be some people that don't like others? Yeah, that's possible. And it's probable, and it is. He that saith he is in the light, he that says he's saved, and hateth his brother or sister, is in darkness even until now. They might walk in darkness all of their life. What a miserable way a Christian has to live like that. When God says, I'm loved. If you take me, you gotta take love. That means you gotta love your brothers, you gotta love your sisters, you gotta love everyone. You know, there's not a soul, if you look at it as that, that person is a soul. You can get by with that not loving them. I love that soul. I, I don't like that way that person lives. I don't like the thing that person does, but that person's got a soul, and I love that soul because Christ did. I have to, or I'm in darkness. That's what he's saying. I believe it. If I don't, I'm in darkness. There's something that I don't see. My eyes are blinded because it's so dark in that particular era of my life. I don't like that person. You don't have to like the person, but you got to love the soul. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Now that's a pitiful condition to be in. That is a sad condition to be in when a person does not have to be in that condition. Well, how do we get in that condition? What can we do about it? And you commandment I give you that ye love one another. As I have loved you that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that they are my disciples if ye love one another. Do you know that you are his disciple? Do you know that he, he, you're saved? Do you know you're going to heaven when you die? There are some things we can know. And these are some of the things we can know. If you love one another. If you accept Christ. But love is the highest virtue a person can express toward another. It is the attribute God revealed when he gave his son to die on the cross. 1 Corinthians 13, we realize love is the bond that unites the church. Love is the ingredient that propels missions, and it is the fuel that ignites revivals. When God's children chose to love, they walked in the light and the darkness flees. For this reason, John wrote, Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that says he is in light and hates his brothers in darkness. Now that is, that is tough meat. That's hard to choose and to swallow. But we can we can do it. You and I can do this. We can do everything God says here with his help, with his guidance, by walking with him. We can do it. Christians are the light of the world. And as citizens of Christ's kingdom of light, we push back the darkness when we walk in love. Have you ever been around somebody that... I, so on fire for God, such a close Christ, Christian to God, there's an aura about them that everybody don't have. 
is the feeling you get in their presence. Because you know they are a ch walk, child walking with God. The way they live, the way they talk, their actions. You can tell when a person is really walking with God. You can know that person knows God. But he that hateth his brothers in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth because the darkness has blinded his eyes. You know that too. When you're around a person like this, it shows. I'm not pulling your leg. It's true. And John's not pulling our leg either. John, loving as Christ love doesn't come easy. It can be costly. And it can be. And it's not easy. It's not easy to be a Christian, Brother Bill. <coughs> because we're in the flesh is why. One day we won't be in the flesh and it'll be easy. But now it's not. So we got to fight. We got an enemy. We got to fight that enemy. And with God's help, we can do it. With God's help, we can be victorious over the world. Not just over some things, but the world. A little bit more. Love it. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. Now he's telling you what the world is right here. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. These are, this is the world, folks. This is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and they love Sarah, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You want to live forever with him? Amen. Now, if you of the world, you're going to die with the world. You're going to die in the world. But when we leave this life, if we're walking with Christ, hey, we're not in the world. We're with him. And we'll be with him forever. You see, there is a reward for being a child of God. There's a greater reward for being an obedient servant to God. The wars just keep piling up, folks. It's not just a little dab you're going to get when you get to heaven. You're going to get what you put up there, along with so much more. He says, lay not your treasures up here on this earth. Lay them up in heaven. And you'll have them when you get there. What are your treasures? I hope they're not worldly treasures. I hope they're godly treasures. That's the only thing that's going to last forever. What we think is worldly treasures, one day it's going to perish. It's going to go away. If fire can destroy your treasures, it will be destroyed. Every one of them. If it's destroyable by fire. If your treasures are spiritual treasures, they'll, you'll have them in heaven. They'll be there waiting for you when you get there. Plus, so much. We, we can't even imagine these things. God provides us so much more than the world offers. God, and only God, can give the meaning, can give hope, can give comfort through life's trials and tribulations. Are you tried? Are you having trials? Are you having tribulations in this life? If you're not, you're one of a very few. We all have them. Even churches have them. So let's pray together. Let's stay together. Let's walk with Christ together. Let's live for him. Let's get off of the milk. And let's start chewing on some of this meat. Lord, we thank you for this lesson. 
tells us a lot, dear God, about ourselves. It tells us about a love, your love, and then it tells us about our love. Sometimes we don't have the love. We have to admit that. We've got to confess that, Lord, and ask that you would give us this ability to love. That's the only way we're going to get it. So we do ask that you give us these things that will help us walk with you, help us stay closer to you, help us to live for you, and help us to obey you. We ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.